then? Boy, that's a big question. That is a big. That's a big topic. There's lots of different ways to approach that. Concisely as as I can, um, I would say that it's the approaching substance, um, imbibing substances to accelerate or catapult or um, you know progress you a little bit faster than you feel that you you're currently doing is okay as long as you have this kind of supreme diligence and discipline and respect and you know what you're doing again though you soon realize that if you start to create um, you know like putting uh, training wheels on your bicycle if you can't do it without the training wheels if you can't walk around without the crutches you know you it's pretty crap really and so it's a bit like the sort of wizard who needs his magic cloak and his magic necklace and his magic uh, staff and all this paraphernalia and if you if you steal all that stuff from him he's just like a little old man in a gray cloak you know the, the true sage the true mystic doesn't need anything doesn't need any of that stuff whatsoever so although it opens your mind your conscious mind to the possibilities and sometimes it can be useful to affirm that yes reality is a very fragile construct it's really just usually confirming things that people kind of already knew actually what you can achieve in those places in terms of your growth is very limited in some ways it's more to uh, persuade people that yes this is fragile this is only one way of doing things and there are many others and for a lot of people i know who have had first time experiences and then gone along and done another half dozen journeys that's been the big win and there hasn't been anything massively useful after that there are other techniques and aspects of course like for self-healing and for cleaning out and the sort of ayahuasca uh you know um drill sergeant aspect which really like scoops you out and shows you your own shit big style there's definitely some value in that but again if somebody's in a bit of a, a dodgy place or there's some kind of bad wiring going on the very worst thing you can do is take these plant medicines the very worst thing you can do is that it's it's it, you know yourself i think whoever you are whatever you're doing whether it's wise to do it or not and again going back to what some of uh, our forefathers like in recent times like robert anton wilson said you know it's it isn't a dietary thing it is medicinal and i think if you just use that little mantra you can't go far wrong so like if i have a cracking headache i don't really like to take pills but i will do every now and again and it it gets me to where i need to be but i'm certainly not going to work that into my diet every day because it's going to affect my body's overall ability to heal itself on an ongoing basis and similarly with psychedelics if that is your only pathway into uh, higher or lower densities then fine but you're gonna disable yourself really on, a, on an ongoing basis so you use it really where you get stuck and when there's stuckness then maybe think about that and it can be extremely useful and there's no doubt about it they are gateways but if you're not disciplined um, consciously and if your um, your mental apparatus isn't clear and clean then when you go into that space there's not much you can actually do that's very productive or integral or wise you just kind of flap about really and that's all very exciting you can come back with a pretty good tale to tell whether you say it to yourself or to your friends but so what so you have to do a lot of work here to be able to do anything there yeah absolutely very well said Doug, I know you wanted to uh, start winding down. Was there, um, did you want to hit on something else? Uh, no. I noticed in the news that uh, there's a conspiracy story about Obama taking uh, trips to Mars as a young man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just to throw that in at the end. Nice one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's, what's odd, though, is I swear to you, at 4 o'clock this morning, I, I found myself unable to sleep again, even though I hadn't, I, I don't know, I've been having uh, strange bouts of insomnia. Yeah, and, my sleep's been messed up as well, actually. Yeah, yeah. I, 
Okay, you know, okay, so uh, what I was just going to say was that I found myself last night actually thinking about that guy and thinking about the danger, like, where do we find a balance between respecting everyone's has something valid to bring to the table, and at what point do we say, like, hey, here's some guy who's going on lectures saying that I saw Obama teleporting to Mars, you know, where do we find this balance? Uh, it was just something that, like, as I found myself awake at 4.30 in the morning, unable to sleep, it popped into my head. Now, we could possibly go down that route, but I actually, if you've also been noticing a sleep weirdness, I, I want to ask, I've been reluctant to speak of this, but particularly in the last few weeks, month at most, I've noticed people feeling like that. I feel like everyone has been really on edge. Everyone that I'm interacting with, and even the the, the quote unquote you know enlightened ones, I feel like there's a lot of sort of hostility and struggling with egos going on right now. And I wonder if this is part of that. If there is anything to 2012, if it's not people really struggling with this shift of energies, or I don't know if I'm the only one who's witnessing this, but I feel like I've noticed a sort of really increased, amped up hostility in a very short period of time. Has, has anyone else noticed that? Doug, do you want to comment on that? I've been talking enough, I think. <laughs> the only thing that I'm seeing is kind of this this looming darkness it feels like uh, you know they're relaunching the titanic and you know i want to believe that this time it'll make it to new york but there's you know and then in my own little tiny micro oracles you know in my workplace i just see kind of this this brazil like fascist empire takeover of something beautiful and I'm trying to figure out how I'm supposed to respond to that. Yeah. Well, I, I do. I do agree. You can see it. You can definitely see it. And I, I don't think you're uh, out of line saying that it is. Uh, you know, there's some hostility in that. I think that's important to say what, whatever we see out there. And I think for me, what, as I said, going back to what we were talking about earlier, the more you've ignored your own shadow stuff um, and you know we can just put that in a very plain way as well you know when like um, negative things happen to us so to speak as young men and women we create a set of like um, response wiring uh, to make sure that doesn't happen again and usually the problem is that it's inappropriately laid down at the time and we go th through our life with that response wiring and it shapes us and restricts us in ways that are no longer appropriate, especially when you start to work on, on consciousness. And if that wiring's still in place, it's getting triggered a lot more now, I think. So people who have been putting off doing some old rewiring jobs about key things about love uh, in particular, and being able to love and being able to be loved, um, and also like about friendships and also about purpose and meaning and fulfillment and happiness and sexuality very fundamental things that affect us all if that stuff has been buried for such a long time I think one of the things that is happening on the planet right now and goodness knows how but you know you, again you could just say well it's energy you know you can always say that there's some sort of energy that's exposing that and those things are coming to the surface and the hostility arises in my view because they're old things from when we were kids and so our response to them just like the sort of replicants in Blade Runner there you go there's a movie reference <laughs> you know you know the replicants respond like children don't they and it's kind of endearing but they can also be very violent as well because they have this um, very immature emotional response and so even though we're very intellectual and very articulate and so on and so forth our old wiring that was laid down when we were six and seven and eight when that gets triggered our response is very hostile and it's very awkward and ungainly and i think you can see that happening you can see that old stuff getting triggered especially by people who consume a lot of mainstream media and believe what happens on cnn and stuff those people are really exposing themselves to some pretty sort of, um, you know, 
medieval therapy at the moment where it's like you know you've got a toothache in 1560 and somebody just knocks you out with an axe handle you know that's that that's the kind of therapy mm. that's available in the mainstream so you have to go to more um elevated and compassionate and sophisticated methods of doing that so you know there's a lot of like emotional aspects to a lot of this work and you know i, I go into that in, in the book and stuff you can't just reside and take um sanctuary in the intellect in these times it really does get very physical very emotional very sexual all those things are intertwined and so you know we can't hide in our bookishness in this respect and neither can anyone else so it requires a lot of courage this stuff and i think people who lack that are getting exposed at the moment and that i include myself in that you know it all we all get you know tweaked by that every now and again